Monkey Billion redeemed the random physics fact. I feel like I should have an echo thing bit there. Tonight's random physics fact is going to be a randomly selected. Uh, and they had, they had to put the main title in green this month, didn't they? Randomly selected inspiration from um, Physics World, April 2021. So give me a number between 3 and 56. Okay, page 40. Let's have a look. And obviously, if we go into the middle of a long article, I might look either side of that. But page 40, then. <clears throat> For the random physics fact, is... <laughs> How much am I going to be able to, t to discuss this, then? I don't know. That's not rude. It's, well, <laughs> it might be, depending on your perspective. Uh, the article is entitled, Battling Bovine Belching. Right. Um, it's all about cutting methane production from livestock. Um, physicists are playing, oh, it says, you know, obviously it's a biology thing, but physicists are playing their part too by developing ways to measure the emissions from cattle. So, if you study hard, if you study really hard in your physics course, you could get to sample cow's farts for a living. For science. Uh, there we go. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not sure how much I can contribute, but... Uh... Spectroscopic analysis. Well, I can say something about that. Okay, an aerial sampling. Sorry. I'm, I'm sure it is deadly serious. <laughs> aerial sampling of art. <laughs> you... <laughs> ah, missed it. Ah, no. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, PhD physicist makes fun of other PhD physicists in uh, Twitch scandal. Uh, no, uh, right, okay, so cattle, all right, th okay, this can be the fact bit, and the rest is just the waffle around it, right, but this, this is actually, right here is an actual fact for the random physics fact, okay? Um, so, gl the, uh, right, how do, okay, so the global CO2 emissions from livestock accounts for the equivalent of seven gigatons. That's that's a lot of tons. Seven times ten to the power of twelve kilograms. So a ton being a thousand kilograms, uh, seven gigatons. And it says it's a similar proportion to cars, right? So that, that's an interesting one. Uh, at the moment, of course. You know, that, that's going to change as years go on. Um, Almost 40% of that 7 gigatons is methane produced by fermentation in the stomachs of cows, or mainly cows. Now we know. Um, I've dropped the magazine. What else can I say? Oh, I said I could say about spectroscopic analysis. Yeah, if you, uh, if you look at the spectrum of... Uh, so, so you, know, you know, like the rainbow, basically, the rainbow of colours. Um, but you've got different types of spectra and uh, that's how you can tell, that's how we can tell what stars are made of even though they're, you know, light years, thousands of light years, millions of light years, billions of light years away, galaxies that are even further. Um, that's how we can tell what's in them is because uh, different elements give out specific wavelengths of light. They may give out multiple wavelengths of light but it won't be a rainbow. It's like, you know, the reason we get a rainbow from the sun is because it's got a, a sort of fairly broad spectrum. It's not it's not completely flat, you know, it, it dips away in the ultraviolet, dips away in the red, and there's also dips in the spectrum where there are elements in the sun, there's absorption spectra. So, so yeah, uh, if elements are between you and the light source, they absorb the light and you see them as absorption lines in the spectrum. And if they're uh, literal lines in the spectrum, by the way, so, so if you had like a rainbow laid out, you'd see missing lines. In fact, that's how they discovered it. You know, they, they looked with more and more precision. Um, early astronomers, <coughs> early physicists, and uh, early chemists, all that sort of, you know, all, all really because the fields weren't so distinct then. Um, and saw that there were these black lines and they were kind of <laughs> probably rubbing the equipment trying to get the black lines off the lenses and they, they weren't on the lenses. It was a real thing. And then they found if they put different elements in between the flame and the and their spectroscope, as I guess they called it later, but they might not have called it at the time, um, they noticed the lines were in different places for different elements, and they went, huh, 
that's neat. I'm sure they didn't say that, but yeah. But, and that's how you've got like almost a, it's almost like a barcode, not quite the same, but it's, it's likened to having a barcode. Um, you can tell what element is what, and because the lines are separate, some of them overlap, but because the lines tend to be separate for different uh, elements and spread differently, and there's different numbers of them. So it's not just like, that's where it's not like a barcode. If you scan a barcode, you scan one at a time. If you try and put two under a barcode scanner, as you probably know, it just doesn't do anything. Um, or scans one and not the other. Um, but because they can overlap, yeah, okay, sure, if they overlap too... If, if any particular line overlaps, then you can't really tell which is which. But because you've got, like, four lines from one element and three lines from another element, and they're all in different places, you can go, ah, this is a mixture, and they'll be at different brightnesses or different dip levels, if you like, if they're absorbing. Um... You can tell how much, roughly, of each one. If you calibrate your instrument, then you can, then you can get a more precise measurement. You know, you, we can tell. Um, even atmospheres of exoplanets now we're starting to get information on, which is wild, really. You know, uh, certainly we're getting the uh, elemental makeup of other stars. That's what they're hoping for, I think, is to be able to isolate the light um, from more exoplanets and. I think they have done it already, but only for certain specific ones that are fairly close or fairly bright. Maybe they've definitely. I know they've already isolated this uh, the light from an exoplanet, and if you've isolated the light, you've isolated the spectrum. Sort of depends. Obviously, you've got to collect it over a certain length of time and stuff. But anyway, waffle, waffle. Uh, Monkey Million saying, "What I love is that if an object passes over the event horizon of a black hole." And is stretched, it's called spaghettification. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes physicists have a sense of humour. Uh, in fact, uh, one of my lecturers in the university, um, I never got round to asking him, but he was quoted in the local newspaper and uh, because they asked him about the Higgs boson and he said, if the Higgs boson is discovered, it will be a really massive discovery. Just a little sort of <laughs> joke amongst physicists, right? But they printed it. They printed it without it just whoosh over their heads. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it was deliberate. It might have been accidental because, it, it, of course, the Higgs boson was later discovered after the, after that article was printed, and um, it was a massive discovery, <clears throat> literally. Um, this is the particle that gives other particles mass, according to the standard model of physics. And and I've simplified it heavily there because that's not my field of visit. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I I think it was an accident. I think I think it's a 50-50 chance. It might have been an accident or it might actually have been like a, a joke just slipped in past the editors just to, just to see if they noticed and nobody did. <laughs> I did. I love things like that. I love when things like that happen. 